So let's just jump straight into the comparison between the Honor View 10 and the OnePlus 5T. Both priced roughly at around $500 or euros. Of course, depending on wherever you are, there might be some smaller differences, but it is definitely close enough to make a good fight. So let's just start already with the first thing, the design and built along with the size comparison here. As you can see, it looks like the Honor View 10 is a little bit taller. I don't really know the numbers and I don't really care because the important part here is actually more the width for me. And you can see that the OnePlus 5T actually is a little bit wider, but due to having this curve and being thinner, it actually sits just about as good in the hand. And all my issues with the black version have been solved here with this Sandstone white version because now it's grippy all the time and it, yes, is absolutely grippy at all times, which is definitely nice to see. But the color looks maybe more white on the video like it is, but it's more like an eggshell white. Definitely nice grip. It feels a little bit odd, definitely not like Sandstone paper, but yep. Now about the Honor View 10, I gotta say, yes, very nice and compact, lies great in the hand, but since it is a metal phone, sometimes it is slippery, but sometimes it's not. But they did the best job to make at least the sides very nice and grippy and all the curves make it feel very good in the hand. I slightly prefer the thinner and more curvy back and in-hand feel of the OnePlus 5T. One and usability is pretty much the same on both, since both have, after all, a 6-inch display with 2 by one of course, there are some differences, like for example, the fingerprint reader. We have it on the 5T on the back and on the View 10 on the front. But what also both have is face unlock, which is actually really nice. And in my review, I said that the one on the View 10 is not nearly as good as on the 5T. And I, it wasn't back then, but I guess due to this, maybe due to the NPU, so the neural processing unit, it actually with the AI learns and got better because it wasn't as fast as it is now. So let's try it and see what happens. As you can see, I'm looking straight into them and they both unlock very, very fast. I gotta still say that the OnePlus 5T works better from different angles and in complete darkness. So this is a little bit of an advantage. Now in terms of the fingerprint reader itself, this one works as you can see here very nice and very fast. And it definitely got better already from the first time that I've used it, the last time that I had it with when I got, when I unboxed the 5T, the white one. The fingerprint on the uh, View 10 definitely is still unmatched though. There is no other one that's better except all the other Huawei phones and Honor phones that just share the same DNA of having the fastest screen turn on times and a great fingerprint reader. Now, the buttons is also one thing where I would say that the Honor View 10 is definitely better. I like the position a lot more because I can easily reach the power button, but also the volume rocker, which is just so much more convenient than on the OnePlus 5T, where the button is placed okay, a little bit higher than normal, but I got used to that very quickly. But this is still a little bit inconvenient, and sometimes when I press this, I also press the volume rocker, and while playing games, this is not the best solution. After all, I still want all buttons on this side, but at least we get the notifications out of it, is at least something that improves convenience. Now. As you can see, both cameras protrude a little bit. I think it's a little bit more elegant on the 5T compared to these weird things sticking out. But otherwise, what else? We have the RR blaster, which we don't have on the OnePlus 5T. And we have a um, headphone jack on both sides. Of course, USB on both and the speaker on both. Notification LEDs are also present on both. So that's nice. Now in terms of battles, of course, it looks a little bit different here on the 5T since it has a completely black front, but both are nice. Not amazing in terms of kind of bezel as design, but definitely did a good job. Now, my personal preference goes a little bit towards the 5T because now it's grippy all the time, it feels a little bit thinner, but ergonomics, I like the fingerprint reader on the front and I like the buttons on the front, so this is where I prefer actually the Honor View 10. Now, let's get to the display. Let's make we switch the cam so I can adjust my cheapo comparison thingy. <laughs> okay, so let's unlock this, I'll go to the gallery. And yeah, brightness I got similar, but one thing is also already a little bit misleading. I measured 530 lux here. I measured 760 lux, but AMOLED lux is not comparable directly to IPS lux. There is just a little bit of a difference, so don't really bother too much about that. And I couldn't quite get the brightness here right because we have screen dimming on the View 10, which is still an issue for me, and that's what makes it way harder to adjust the brightness because it it's now, as you can see, a little bit dimmed. I have to say, 
both very nice displays, but I gave half a star more, or I would give this a five star where I gave this a four and a half star, but not because of the resolution or I prefer AMOLED, it's just because the calibration is just so amazingly done on the Honor, uh, on the 5T because great vibrant colors, as you can see, it just pops so much more. And it's not just because of being dull because viewing angles are also a little bit better. As you can see here on the 5T, brightness is a little bit better after all. And there is just no screen dimming issue. So no matter how you want to see it, of course, calibration is quite different and you could adjust it and so on. But I think this is obvious. The 5T is just better. Yes, a little bit more of actual sharpness due to having a proper RGB matrix compared to the AMOLED display. This is just not enough to give it the win. Now, let's get to the speaker of the, five, of the View 10. And sorry for mixing those two up all the time. And yes, I know it never really translates 100% over the microphone, but here's just what I'm gonna say, and this is completely being objective. The View 10, not all that loud, and it sounds a little bit tinny and thin. The OnePlus 5T has one really big thing going for it. It's the volume. It's very loud, even though it doesn't seem so much on the video. I get that, but it's also way richer and full. Of course, it's still... A uh, bottom firing one, but one of the best bottom firing ones after all. And when it comes to the next thing, the headphone jack, here we get an average, we get an okay headphone jack, but here we actually get a really good one. So definite win here for the OnePlus 5T. Now let's check performance. Let me kill off all the apps. Not that that really matters so much. And startup times won't be comparable, I think, but let's see. And with comparable, I mean just me opening them in time. Because I also think it does not absolutely matter. Those flagships, as you can see, are so close to each other. And I actually am a little bit surprised of how similar they start up all the time. Now, when it comes to the performance itself, I said that I give half a star off on the View 10 because it just doesn't quite reach the level of a Snapdragon 835. And I'm still standing by this. Because, I don't know, for some reason the OnePlus 5T feels a little bit more consistent, a little bit smoother, a little bit high frame rate. Still both on a flagship level, don't get me wrong, but if I would have to choose, this was this one just feels a little bit lighter, a little bit more fluid. There is nothing at all wrong with the View 10. And it definitely behaves better than the Mate 10 Pro that I had, or the Mate 10. Which by now, though, with updates could be just as good. But I know it's always hard to show off the differences of two phones being so close to each other. And you can see some lag, of course, when I try to show it off. There will be always some lag going on. But definitely, both more than good enough. This is the important part. So I don't think that the OnePlus 5T is so much better in terms of performance that just because of that you shouldn't go for the View 10. If you can just live with a little bit less, it's totally fine. Now, battery life is a little bit of a different thing. Because 1 hour and 10 for the OnePlus 5T for a full charge where it's one hour and 50 so like 40 minutes more of course also due to slightly bigger battery but still on the one on the on a view 10 where the mate pro though the mate 10 pro got like an hour 20 for the bigger battery so they used the better charging technology battery life though definitely goes towards the view 10 because i got i would say roughly on average seven hours of screen time where i got about six hours on the oneplus 5t so a solid hour more that's good enough for you. What was a little bit better though was on the 5T, the standby drain, which is on a stock Android level. So really good. The View 10 is not quite there. Now in terms of software, as you can see, there is a big difference because yeah, this definitely doesn't look as good as this. Both are with the stock Android launch, uh, with the stock launcher, you can see the layout just looks a little bit kind of more boring here it just doesn't look quite on the same level as you can see this looks way more stylish with the black theme especially and so on but in terms of features actually both are really good on their 
separate sides because here we have the option to change the buttons, which of course has here as well. We have a very good theming engine, even better than this one because this is not really a theming engine. You have few themes that you can choose between. You have a one-handed mode and you have quite a lot of good nice features like knuckle gestures and all these kind of things, but nothing beats the OnePlus 5T when it comes to options because you have extra options for the buttons here for all buttons, double tap and so on, you have, yeah, a lot. I don't really want to go into it because it's, it's, this is what stock Android should be. Enhanced, but just as good. And you don't really sacrifice on anything. And that's why it's my absolute favorite software. Of course, updates and so on. On both sides, I would say that only between these two, the OnePlus 5T has the upper hand. You will get longer updates for a longer period of time. And if not officially, then definitely unofficially with custom runs and so on. On the Honor View 10, especially what I have seen from the Honor 9, I don't have the highest hopes. Of course, it will get updates for a solid amount of time, but honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of Android 8 on EMUI 8. It, it behaves a little bit odd. Screen dimming, some smaller quirks, like some apps crashing more often than I had on any other phone. It's still not a lot, but still pointed out and some RAM management things are still there. But, but minor things, I'm okay with the software. Personally, I can't really get fully behind it anymore, though the one on the OnePlus 5T I love. Now, camera. I'm going to keep the short, not show anything. If you want to see some more pics, just check the specific reviews. But I'm just going to say so much. For selfies, the OnePlus 5T is better because there were some issues with the OnePlus, with the View 10, just because it overexposed and so on. But otherwise, it would have been quite close. Low light, actually quite similar. I don't really want to pick out the winner here. But for the main camera, for pictures, definite win for the Honor View 10. First of all, it has a really good bokeh mode, a lot of extra options, so many features like no other. And I just have to quickly show this, how many features you have. As you can see here, these modes, <laughs> no other phone has so many. Of course, I would never really use many of these, but still, the UI and the overall thing, uh, the, the, the results are just way more better. Clearer, sharper pictures, very consistent and so on. Not that the OnePlus 5T isn't good, but for me, it's not quite on the flagship camera level, flagship level, because it is a flagship as it is, but camera wise, I expected actually a little bit more than I got. Now, when it comes to video though, then I have to say, then the wind goes to the OnePlus 5T because the View 10 just falls behind. It's actually not that the OnePlus 5T is so good, but it's the, the fact that the View 10 is a little bit weaker because autofocus had some issues. It was a little bit quite shaky because we have very good EIS on the on OnePlus 5T, which we just don't get on the View 10 and the quality is not quite on that level. So if it's for pictures, definitely towards the View 10. If it's for video, towards the 5 Plus overall, you have to take that on what you think about it now actually it's got shorter than i expected the video to be but i get you got all the details so let's just go through all the categories once again and i'm just gonna choose a winner or should i tell you the stars no i don't know i'm not i'm just gonna tell you which one wins design and build quality no real winner both amazing design I slightly like this a little bit more but just a tad little bit fingerprint reader i like it actually more on the view 10 Face unlock, just a little bit better on the 5T because it works from better angles and in complete dark darkness. Where this one actually got better with time, which is the great thing about the AI, which could be a big factor for you maybe. Now display, clear win still for the 5T. It's not the best screen out there, not the highest resolution or anything, but it's so damn well calibrated. And an AMOLED with great viewing angles and everything else. Sound. Still a clear winner for the 5T. It's just noticeably richer and louder. Headphone jack, just about that as well. Performance, it's also better in that regard because it feels a little bit more fluid, a little bit more consistent, a little bit more snappy. I miss a little bit of snappy feel here because what it does very quickly is jump between apps, but there is just some slight thing that seems like it's holding it back. I think it could work faster if they would optimize maybe animations or just the overall scrolling or something else a little bit more. Something feels like it's been held back. Battery, yes, that one goes to the View 10, at least an hour more, if not maybe even one and a half hours. Stand battery and a little bit better here, but yeah. Software, clear win, but a clear win over everything for the OnePlus 5T. I think this is the best software on any 
phone you can get, no matter what brand. It is sleek, it looks good, it has all the useful features, and EMUI is EMUI. But that also brings us to the camera software where I like it a lot that we have a lot of features even though I don't really care. I mostly use uh, use auto mode so I don't really care so much about that. But if you want great pictures, this is it. If you want really good video, even though still not on a flagship flagship level, the 5T. Now, let's see them both at the same price. Then I would personally just go for the OnePlus 5T. In the big important factors like the display, the sound, the performance, it just wins. Battery life is still solid enough, it feels great, it has the super software, no annoyances, and this phone actually got better with time, especially now with the Sandstone version. The big gripe that I had was the slipperiness, which is gone now. Of course, if you use cases, which actually are included in both of these versions, that is a non-issue, so it really comes down to what you want. If you are someone who likes Huawei phones for their software, for whatever they stand for, and if you like the AI, if you think this is a big thing in the future for the camera and so on, this is still solid. But actually one thing we should mention, and this is just some, just because someone mentioned in the comments today, he said that, that the best one would be the Huawei Mate 10. Not the Pro, but the regular one. And I agree with him because I said that, that this is the best phone if they would just fix the software. So back when I reviewed it, it still had some software quirks. If those would have been gone and you would also get this for lower than 500, this would actually be my favorite. Because if I quickly compare that to the OnePlus 5T, design wins for me on the on the mate 10 because the mate 10 felt so amazing and so compact for a five inch i mean a six inch phone but it was a six inch phone with 16 by 9 not that two by one which is more like a 5.5 inch the next thing the display wasn't as bright as this one and not quite as great uh, calibrated but it was higher quality higher resolution but I actually love this one so much that that is not the factor that would lead me to the um, Huawei Mate 10. The next thing, the speaker was better, dual speaker, even louder, just better because it was also a little bit front spacing. The performance back then was the big thing for me. It just was not nearly as good as it should have been. If it would have been now, maybe due to updates, as good as the View 10, then then I would be totally satisfied. Then absolutely everything would be fine. And then the little bit less compared to this one would be fine. And then the battery life, which was, I think, also like about seven hours for me. Surprisingly good. Software, yeah, still the same. Camera was also solid. Pretty much com very comparable to the View 10, actually. Some small differences, but not enough to really make it or break it. And then the value with under $500, where when you import it, the Huawei Mate 10 is an amazing phone. So in that regard, if everything would have been fixed, which I still doubt is the thing, I would actually prefer the Huawei Mate 10 over all of these. <laughs> when I say all of these, I mean these two. But if it's just between those two, locally, kind of locally available, you can, because you can pretty much buy this everywhere and this also, but this actually sometimes on sale, but you can also get the OnePlus 5T from importers, actually even cheaper than from OnePlus 5 themselves. So both at maybe like 450 street prices. I think this one is just the more solid, more mature, the less flawed phone, but also better. <laughs> That's it. Okay, I guess this was hopefully helpful enough. So, yeah.